What are some different ethical considerations that someone might have in DR? So we have a lot of issues. There are two big um, aspects of the code that kind of conflict with Dominican culture. One of them is receiving gifts and that whole process. Um, and the other one is with dual relationships. And for some reason, I like, I, for me, they're kind of tied together because kind of like if you're receiving gifts from the family, then it might develop into a dual relationship. And like, I get that. And, but it is a big part of our culture for families to give their teachers and um, to give the lady that does your nails and to give uh, the person you work with and just like everyone you have constant contact with to give them a gift for their birthday or to give them a gift for Christmas or for teachers, there's like Valentine's Day is a big gift receiving moment of the year. So it's a huge part of the culture and it's kind of jarring when you have to tell a parent like, oh no, we can't receive a gift or oh, like, like, oh, I know you did this mug with my name on it, but you need to take it back. So it kind of, I'm not saying it ruins your relationship, but it kind of, it, it's kind of hard for, for parents to get. And it, it is kind of a barrier that you put into that rapport that you've been building with them. And it just doesn't apply to our culture as it does to an American culture because they're just different. And it, it's, people are so used to doing it that it's, it's more shocking when you say like, no, you can't give me a gift than when you just accept it. Um, so that's a, that's, that's a big one here. That's one that I feel like every person has a hard time with it when they hear about it. And then for dual relationships, that's another big difference that we have because we aren't, there aren't as many BCBAs here. There aren't as many people here. And Dominicans are all very closely knit. So when I meet someone new and they hear my name, they're, oh, are you so-and-so's daughter? Or are you so-and-so's grand granddaughter? Mm -hmm. Or or they hear my boyfriend's name. Oh, is he related to so-and-so? <laughs> and it's very common for people to kind of like try to build your family tree when they meet you. And <laughs> yeah. most of the time, <laughs> there's some sort of connection because it's a small community and people are very close knit and people have very, very, very extensive memories of family histories. So it's, that's, a, that's a hard one um, to, to kind of deal with because sometimes you get yourself into situations where you're not, you are not aware that there is a dual relationship and then it kind of pops up and you're like, oh man, what do I do now? Who do I refer to? Because there are two other people in the city who are working with kids and in my case, I'm the only one who's working with teenagers. So where do I refer the student to? Because there is this dual relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and th those are like two, of, two ethical, I guess, considerations that are really hard to deal with here that keep popping off. For us, for, for me, for my staff, um, for the students, it just, it keeps coming back up because it's th those are two parts of the ethics code that kind of clash with our culture and it makes sense the the ethics code was built for americans and we're a whole different culture so maybe we need to develop our own version of it or maybe define some things a little bit further in order for us to be able to practice safely within the ethical boundaries exactly You've been watching Autism Knows No Borders. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Also, we'd love to hear from you, so let us know what you think in the comments section. Click here to watch this interview in its entirety. You can also find us on your favorite podcast app.
Tune in each week for engaging conversations of how people across the globe are inspiring change and building community. Thanks for watching. Take care.